Wound Dragon milestones, try to get them quick, okay? A lot of people were asking questions today, recorded a video during stream, didn't like it because we talked about 14 days, it's actually 10 days, we're gonna do a new video, we're gonna get it up right now. Okay, so first question, can you get Moon Dragon? The answer is, of course you can. You have a wallet, you can get Moon Dragon. Probably not the answer you were looking for, let's talk about the reason why. So this is a standard issued character milestone, they tend to look like this. It's a 10 day event instead of a 14 day event, so it makes the time frame a little bit weird, but ultimately that's everything. So you have a 24 hour milestone over the next 10 days where you can obtain Moon Dragon shards from Blitz and Arena. Simple solution to this, because it says win or lose, you can forego success in any of these game modes, specifically Arena. You probably want to win the, the Blitz Battles. That's its own thing. Uh, by just picking five quirky characters, going into the fight, and losing. Yes, that seems unfair, considering the fact that you are just getting 50 flat points for doing the fight. Off the top of your head, 5 times 50 is 250 points. The Milestone has a grand total every day of 1,600 points. It's a pretty decent chunk into the uh, scoring. The next is the Blitz. Uh, a lot of people will say, what team should I put together for Quirky? The answer is, don't. Maybe you can put a Quirky character on some of your already existing teams that are going to win. Maybe you want to do the old trick of losing down in the Blitz so you can win more fights at lower tiers, like Tier 2, 3, and 4 with those characters. The whole point is... You're going to sim because no one's actually going to do the blitz. And we do want to win the sim blitz. But since it's win a blitz battle with quirky characters, uh, if you use full teams, that fight is worth 60 plus 8. In general, if you win a generic blitz fight, you're getting the generic blitz fight rewards. Overall, it shouldn't make too much of a difference if you don't have a high investment in them. Just drop down, use those characters with characters that will win. You're still trying to get some points in the Blitz. And remember, every fight you win in the Blitz gives you a chance at Unity Orb Fragments from the victory. So don't go out of your way to change your teams. That's as far as the daily event. Do your best. Try it as often as you can. And if you do, try to Blitz every, you know, two hours or so just to make sure you get the most points. It's not unreasonable to get all of the milestones every day. But set yourself a reasonable goal, assuming you can hit close to a thousand points somewhere between... 11 and 12, maybe a little bit less for, for players who aren't as wide rostered. Maybe you can get to the Milestone 9 to get that shard. That'll give you a good understanding of how many shards you're going to come by just from this. We're not going to talk about the orbs because they're the orbs. The next that we can talk about is the raids. So, remember what we just talked about in Arena? We're going to talk about it here too. The scoring here is very simple. Win or lose... A raid battle with quirky characters just generic winning a raid battle is worth three points so you have multiple options some people are going to say i'm in doom raids and i'm in doing the hardest raid i can and i don't have these characters up yes we know that's why they designed it this way for you the best options for your alliance would be to drop down to a more simple raid for you to do and then utilize those characters there you do have another option if your option is to uh, do a raid at 30% or 60%, any energy you have after you reach that point, you can do the same trick in Arena. Take five characters that with the quirky tag that you can use, go in, spend the 10 energy to start the fight, and immediately quit. That counts as a loss. You will get nine times five is 45, plus three points, 48 points per energy spent. This is times the number of people in your alliance. So assuming you do that, just two times a day. Two times 48 is 96. Times 24. That's 2,304 total points you will get per member of your alliance. If you do it over the next 10 days, it's 23,000 total points. Which is, of course, a little bit less than a third of the way in. As you can tell, this is not designed for everybody. So... That's the, the lowest case scenario and the best case scenario. We can run the same numbers however you'd like to do. You can buy raid energy attacks. You could just ignore raids. It really depends on what you value. But for the most part, like I said, if you do two full teams, whether you win with them or otherwise, and move up, you'll probably end somewhere between 11 and 10 milestones at the end of the 10-day period. You're going to lose out on a good chunk of these fancy gear pieces. 
so be it. If you're willing to and you want everybody to go absolutely crazy, what you can do is you can go ahead and cancel five attacks a day, each day times 10 players, so I'm sorry, times 10, 24 players. That gives you 57,000 points. That's going to get you a little bit higher up somewhere in this general vicinity, assuming everybody plays the game or does something here or there. Maybe someone does an extra attack. Maybe one of your characters happens to be quirky that you use anyway in the raids. And also keep in mind, I'm only discussing the one major raid in the day. Uh, you can decide whether you do that for both the Gamma raid, whatever Greek raid is currently on at the time of this event, and the U7 Do Doom Raid. The only thing I will say is obviously this is hard for Doom Raid since Doom Raid has an ISO requirement and your quirky characters might not also be the same as your ISO requirement characters. So if you want to succeed in this, you're probably going to have to drop down a raid. If you want to clear as many milestones as you possibly can, you're also probably going to do only about 30 to 60% of a raid or spend a lot of energy, cores, whatever, starting a fight with quirky characters and losing down. That's not very efficient. To me, maybe take the next 10 days off. Yeah, you're going to take a little bit of a hit in raid ranking and you're not going to get as many rewards. But ultimately, if you think these rewards are worth the trade, you are more than welcome to invest in them. Personally, I don't think this uh, you know, scheduling, the amount of points you have to do is reasonable. If you want to work backwards and figure out the exact amount of things you have to do, uh, it's 75,550 divided by 24 divided by 10. Everybody is responsible for 314 points per day to get all of the milestones. Assuming you get 48 points, as I've said, that means you have to spend six and a half energy a day tanking fights with five quirky characters. You can split that among three in one raid, three in the other, however it makes sense to you. Generally speaking, now might be the time for you as a player to go to 30% on the raid just to get a little bit of progress and then dump the rest of your energy to make sure you complete the milestones if you choose to. That's pretty much everything about the milestones. Uh, they are not great, but they never have been great, so it's pretty reasonable. The one thing I will say uh, I'm not going to do the math on how many unity orbs you have to open because if you're completing the milestones, you're getting the guaranteed stuff as well as unity orbs. Bulk of your unity orbs are going to come from your blitzing and from your daily events. That's what has the most amount of those fragments as you play. So, yes, we can clearly see each unity orb is worth some arbitrary amount of number, 647. There's a reason. No one cares. Uh, so 41,000 divided by 647 is 64 orbs. This number is actually fairly common. I believe 62 or 64 tends to be the number of orbs from the last time this event happened, but my memory doesn't serve me. So if you need to open 64 orbs, it's 6.4 orbs a day. That's just easy math. Feel free to go nuts. Obviously, these later rewards are worth significantly more outside of the shards. Set yourself a reasonable goal. If you only think you're going to open about two, maybe three orbs a day, you can work backwards. Three times six, what was it, 47. 1,900 times 10, you'll get 194. You know, 1,900 times 10. You know what I'm saying. You'll be able to get somewhere probably around the 14 to 15. Anyway, that's my information for this. Hopefully it helps you. Maybe you just don't care about the event. The event does force you to play the game outside of the way you normally would. To be fair, most events do that. This one doesn't reward you for doing what you were doing anyway. This one rewards you for changing what you're doing to work on the event. Decide amongst yourselves individually and as an alliance whether or not it's worth it to do less of the same thing you've been doing to accrue more of these shards. My personal recommendation, it might be considering the fact that the iWatch team looks really strong. Uh, that said... Moon Dragon looks like Cole Obsidian from a perspective of we're probably going to get not a lot of access to her over the next couple months. Same thing with Phi Lavel. These characters look really good. Try to get them where you can. Have a good night, guys. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.